Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and I have to say I am ecstatic to be here today talking to you about our multilingual book club which has been phenomenal. I have so much to talk to you about. I'll be sharing with you first of all a summary of the community participation just to give you an idea of the things I've seen in terms of just how many people are doing this. It's incredible. Then I'll be sharing with you my personal experience so far. So I'll talk about what my approach has been like, how that has evolved, and through that I'll also discuss what have I enjoyed the most, things like that, but also what have been the biggest challenges for me with this book so far. And then finally I'll actually share with you on my laptop uh, my notes. I'll give you a preview. This is something that I've done for Patreon supporters, cappuccino level or above, but I'm going to give a little preview today just to sort of discuss what I've been doing because it might inspire some of you to do something similar, maybe you'll get some cool ideas for your own note taking. And there is also a giveaway in this video. This is one of my first ever giveaways. I want to do this more and more. This video is not sponsored by anybody. I basically went out and I decided to purchase a few things I would like to share with you. So more information on that towards the end of the video, but that's basically the agenda. Finally, one thing I really want to share with you today is, as many of you saw in the last video, my Blue Wave mug did make it over from San Francisco. I feel really excited about that. But I now actually have a lovely, splendid little coffee setup at my mum's house here while I'm kind of settling in and getting ready to look for a place to live. So I've got not only some gorgeous beans from Square Mile in London, which is James Hoffman's coffee shop in case any of you know that, but I also have this lovely little Hario V60 decanter pour over um, method and I've got this gorgeous little corner in my mum's kitchen. Cheers to just an epic day of language learning, an epic week of language learning and just cheers to this absolutely amazing community that I have been so fortunate to be supported by and I just I want to give as much as I can to all of you this year so cheers. Ah that's bloody good. Mm. So jumping in first of all I do want to say a very quick thank you to all of you who watched my last video where I kind of opened up and explained and shared some internal struggles I've actually been going through. I have received this unbelievable inpour of support and lovely heartwarming messages and comments even on Patreon. So many new people have joined me on Patreon this last week as I begin this kind of terrifying journey of actually doing this as my full-time job and supporting myself through this. So just thank you all for that because that's part of why I'm so excited and happy and I'm feeling so good and light today. It's because so many of you made me feel like it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be okay. And um, yeah, so just thanks for that. So let's jump into talking about the book club. Now I have to say I am absolutely blown away by the participation so far. So this is really just an absolute huge credit to all of you because there are about 2000 people all over the world reading this book together at the same time in so many languages. It just blows my mind. Like I never imagined so many people would not only join, but actually do it. Because if you remember the beginning of this series, when I started this project, the biggest measure of success for me is can we get, you know, more people around the world who may have never actually done this, who may have never even started let alone finish reading their first novel in a foreign language. Can we as a community, as a group, create this wonderful sort of supportive community-based project that helps so many more of those people do it, right? People that may have never done it or certainly may not have done it now. And then of course, along the way, can we create a legitimate community around this where people are actually able to share their thoughts, in the language that they're learning? Can they have discussions? Can they make meaningful connections and new friends? And all of that has been happening. I've received probably 400 emails, I think at least, it's been insane. Just people saying about how like, they have, they're halfway through the book, they're already finished with the book, they're reading it a second time, they can't wait to do the next book club. People saying that like, they would have never thought that they could do this and they're actually 
they're able to do it, they're enjoying it. And then some people are saying, you know, it's hard, I'm struggling, but I'm having such a good experience. I'm just seeing so much and people are posting on Journaly. I've seen an unbelievable amount of interaction and engagement, some really interesting discussion. It's just been incredible. And also on Instagram, people sharing stories and posts. Just hats off to all of you for doing this with me. And I, I'm very optimistic about doing this again and again and again. And I'll improve my ability to manage this project as we go as well. But just seriously, unbelievable participation so far. So now let's discuss my personal experience. First of all, I will say this has been really enjoyable and for me, pretty challenging, right? And I knew that was gonna be the case coming in. So I have been very, very slow. I will tell you I'm now on chapter six. So yeah, pretty darn slow, right? Many of you are much further along than me. Like I said, some of you have already finished the book. But here's the thing. The first thing I want to say is that if you are on chapter six, like me, or even if you're on chapter one, chapter two, the point is it doesn't matter, right? And that's why I didn't set a specific schedule for this first book club, because I'm not sure yet the best way to do this. Because the thing is, when you've got thousands of people around the world reading a novel like this, and they're reading it in their target languages that they are learning, everyone's gonna read it at a different pace, everyone's gonna have a different approach. So I'm still figuring out the best way to do this as a group. But for now, for this first time, I was really adamant that I'm not gonna impose that pressure on anybody. So the point here is that I'm on chapter six. All right, I haven't got very far. There's my little bookmark. So I just want to say, if you're also going very slowly and taking your time or struggling, it's okay. Don't worry. Now, for me, part of that has been, you know, life's been kind of insane. I just finished my job, just moved across the world back to the UK. It's been kind of insane. But nevertheless, I've been really, really enjoying it. One thing I've really enjoyed actually is my note taking, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. But it's been really fun seeing this as a really big project for myself, right? It's been fun seeing this as a sort of discovery, right? I'm a detective trying to figure this thing out, not just reading it through really quickly. Now that's also really fun. It's just that my level in Spanish doesn't allow me to do that just yet. So by creating a project out of this, it allows me to enjoy it just as much, even if I'm not able to just read it for pleasure. Now the biggest challenge I've had has definitely been vocabulary. And so as we look at my notes in a minute, you'll notice that the majority of things I've noted down in my table, they're all vocab, right? And usually I often tell you that when you see my other notes inside of Notion, I typically try to capture phrases or parts of sentences. I don't often just capture words on their own. But the thing about novels is that I always find one of the biggest challenges is vocabulary. There's just so much vocab, right? Because there are all these incredibly deep and complex and rich descriptions, setting a scene or describing someone's personality or an emotion or a feeling or just a single moment in someone's life in this story. There's so much and that's always the biggest challenge. And so that's been kind of cool to see play out inside of my notes. So without further ado, let's just have a look at my notes. Let's crack open the laptop. Now, what you're about to see in my notes is a Notion page that I created, and I'm sharing that with cappuccino and latte level supporters over on Patreon. It's like a top secret thing. I'm happy to go through it in the video because I want to share with you what I've been doing in case it inspires some of you to do this yourself. But in terms of actually having access to the notes, being able to copy them, duplicate them, whatever you want, that's available for cappuccino supporters and above over on Patreon. So at the top here, what we can see is that, you know, I made it look nice. I've got a nice little, you know, picture at the top here, got the title of the book. The first thing I did is create these sort of context notes. So this is me, like I said, I'm a detective. I wanna keep track of things that I discover about the story. And I found this really helps me as I sort of have these like, you know, theories and hypothesis. I wanna like, you know, what's gonna happen next? Who is this person? What's their significance to the story? It helps me to have this sort of context that I build up over time. And I like doing it inside of Notion because if I want to add something in, I can just sort of, um, you know, include it in the middle or edit the setup. I don't have to start over again. And then let's go down and we'll see the character map. Over time, what I want to do is create kind of a cool visual map of the characters. I find that really fun. But for now, I've just been sort of collecting information. So, you know, Daniel, he's the narrator, main character, 10 years old, lost his mother at four years old. 
I've basically been slowly, you know, building up this information on different characters. So as you can see here, this is just me collecting information on all these characters as I go. And again, that's kind of the nice thing about doing this inside of Notion. I can come in and just keep adding stuff, right? Whereas on paper, it would be difficult to know like how much space am I gonna need. And then after that, I've created this gorgeous little table here. So this is where I've got the Spanish in one column, English in the next column. I decided to add some tags. Now this is all experimental. I'm just trying things out. I've also tagged the chapter because later on, I may want to go back through these notes and I may want to know roughly where to find them. Then I have this column for translator's take where in some cases, like for example, un silencio a gritos, right? So I translated this as a shouting silence. Then I looked to the English copy for reference and the translator had gone with a deafening silence and I thought it was really nice. So I haven't used this very much, but it's kind of um, like, here's a good one, la fe. Now that means faith, but the translation in the novel was innocence. And that, like, that makes sense to me. So that column is just there for when I need it. I'm trying out tracking repetitions because there are some words, for example, there's this word, la penumbra, that, you know, I have a feeling a lot of people probably would not have looked that up, right? They may have just said, no, 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 I'm gonna figure this out or it's not worth writing down. This word came up six times already in the first few chapters, right? And so it's an interesting thing to track. I'm not sure whether it's gonna be super helpful or not, but that's what I've been doing. Now, the first thing you'll notice here is I have a lot of vocab, and that is part of why I've gone so slowly. Many of you might remember the video I did where I talked about one thing I like to do when starting a novel like this. I really take my time in the first few chapters because I wanna really, really understand all the context. So my approach in the beginning was I looked up basically everything. I really took my time and I was fine with that. What happened is that naturally that was very slow. So over the first few chapters, what I found is that I had these two sort of opposing forces of curiosity. One was the curiosity to understand every single thing and you know, really get every detail of the story because I just become so incredibly curious as I do this. But the other opposing force was the curiosity to find out what happens next. And because I was going so slowly, it was like a tug of war, right? So what I found is that as I went through the first, second, third, fourth chapter, I did start to look up things less. So I started to develop kind of an intuition for this is just not as important, right? This is not as useful. And I also started writing less things down. So sometimes I'd look a word up and then think, yeah, it's just not worth writing down. So that helps speed up things. The next thing I did is on my phone, this is where I was looking up vocabulary. I was basically just using word reference. And what I started doing on chapter five was instead of looking it up, writing it down, looking it up, writing it down, I just started taking screenshots. So what I started doing is look it up and all throughout the chapter, I would just take screenshots on my phone. And then my plan is at the end, so that's gonna to be today, I will go through and actually one by one add those all into my notes here. And I found that has really helped to speed me up. So basically we'll see how this evolves because I don't know, who knows, maybe halfway through the book, I'll just give up and just read it. But that's why I'm documenting this process. Like I told you before, it's messy. I don't think it's practical or authentic for me to just say, here's my method for reading a novel. The fact is, every time I do this, it changes all throughout, depending on my needs, my level, the specific story, how hard it is at a given time. So I wanted to document this as I do it so you get to see my personal journey. And again, maybe that will inspire some of you to try new things, or maybe it will just make some of you feel like, oh, it's normal to struggle. It's normal to change up your strategy, right? That's the whole point of this. That's where I am right now. Right now I am reading, I'm looking things up less and I'm not always saving things I look up, but then when I do want to capture something, I screenshot it. Sometimes I take a photograph of the page and I zoom in on the sentence I want if I know I'm gonna wanna grab the whole sentence. And that's been working really well for me up to this point. And then I have been writing posts on Patreon and it's actually been really nice because I posted a whole little blog post on Patreon about the first few chapters. And we had a whole discussion where people were sharing their experiences, um, different interpretations of certain 
elements of the story. So it's been really, really cool. So finally, the giveaway. So I'm really excited about this. As many of you will know, I love Babbel. It's one of my favorite language learning apps. I do have some criticisms of Babbel, right? It's not perfect and they don't have you know, a massive array of languages, but they do have quite a few. And so if Babbel has the language I'm learning, I really like it. It's probably my favorite app, I, I think, up to this point. So I decided to just go and buy a few three month all language subscriptions that I can give away as coupons, right? So really excited about this. So basically this is our first one. I bought three of them. So we'll do a few more of these and just see how it goes. But all I want you to do is if you're interested in participating, why not go on Instagram and share a story about the book club? So whether it's a picture of you reading it, whether it's a picture of the book, like just share something about your experience with the book club. And all I would ask you to do is tag me. My Instagram handle is on the screen right here. And optionally, do hashtag multilingual book club. I'll also put that on the screen as well. And I just think it'd be really fun because I've seen people doing this and it's generated a really nice amount of discussion and just sort of, it feels very community based when people are doing this. That's my first idea for a giveaway activity we could do. And I will choose at random one person from the list of those who do this in the next week or so. Let's say this closes on April 11th and uh, let's see how it goes. And I will reach out to one of you directly on Instagram and I will let you know the coupon code that you can redeem for a three month all language subscription to Babbel. Really excited to see how this goes. I can't wait to do more giveaways like this in the future. Okay, everybody, that was a long video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait to give you more updates as I go through the next few chapters of this book. I can't wait to see your post over on Journaly. Make sure that you use these, the topic that I'm gonna leave in the description for those posts. It's been really fun to see you all. And uh, yeah, cheers to just reading our, reading books in our target languages. It's so darn cool.